breath work and fat loss. How does that physiologically work? Is it a myth or is it a fact? Let's explore it. And I'm really excited to explore this with you. We're gonna find out, can you perform a certain kind of breath work and potentially increase your rate of fat loss in conjunction with exercise. Hey, I'm AJ Fisher. I'm creator of the Hypoxix Method and the Breathography Technique. We're gonna talk a little bit about those breathwork exercise techniques today within the session. I'm very excited to teach this to you. Now, how do we burn fat? What is, what is the physiology behind that? Well, did you know that we excrete most of our fat through a little molecule called carbon. <laughs> I think most of you have heard of that. It's the stuff of stars. It's what we are made up of mostly, carbon. We're exhaling carbon. Did you know that? Yeah, we exhale carbon dioxide. Carbon is part of that carbon dioxide. I think if you were to ask most of your friends, how do we lose fat? You think, oh, surely when we're exercising through sweat or when we're peeing or we're pooing. But actually, it's through our breath. You notice that your breath rate increases when you're exercising and you're excreting that, that carbon in your breath. Now, some people think that simply, oh, well then I can just breathe more and I can hyperventilate and I'll lose more fat. Well, some science does support that hyperventilation can help mobilize fat and potentially increase fat loss a little bit because of the compound adrenaline a stress hormone that is that is increased in the system when we hyperventilate but the key is we need to excrete more carbon than we're putting in so you could hyperventilate all day but if you put a bunch of carbon in aka food that is made up of mostly carbon then you're going to maintain or even gain weight so what is the key here well let's break down the science a little bit more thank you to the nerds who are in the room with me i know it's it, it's really exciting but i'm going to breeze through this quickly just in case you're you know you're really here to get to the nitty gritty and how to apply it in a practical sense but quickly hormone sensitive lipase Th there's the enzyme that is going to mobilize our fat. Now, what are the things that trigger this hormone-sensitive lipase? Well, a couple of things, one of which is that adrenaline that I just spoke of. But the caveat is we could mobilize that fat all day, but if we're not actually oxidizing it in our muscle by contracting the muscle and, and quickening our breath rate as a result, of our of our exercise just a normal involuntary process now there is the key it's the combination of the two so let's mobilize that fat by increasing adrenaline which is also the thing the compound that is increased when we perform high intensity exercise and this is why many studies that look into the fat loss benefits of high intensity exercise we do see more fat mobilized and even more fat loss especially around the waist when we perform high intensity exercise so increasing hormone sensitive lipase, we're mobilizing the fat, there's that spike in adrenaline, and then let's get more oxygen into the muscle because oxygen is the fuel to the fire that burns the fat. Well, how do we get more oxygen into the muscle? Well, let's move, let's move while we're activating that adrenaline not simply activating adrenaline from being stressed and being sedentary because we also do unfortunately activate adrenaline in that way and or and or just hyperventilation which hyperventilate over hyperventilating can have negative consequences on the body such as muscle spasms and dizziness and all the things so instead let's hypoventilate <laughs> while we're performing breath work to get those fat loss benefits it's amazing my research that's being performed through American Pu Public University and also New York Institute of Technology here in Long, Long Island, we have seen increased rates of fat loss using this breath work technique. It's a hypoventilation technique, which means slowing your breath down in conjunction with movement. So hypoventilation is simply the direct opposite of hyperventilation. So interestingly, a lot of research has shown that slow breath rate in conjunction with exercise can also spike our sympathetic nervous system, which is the fight or flight, which is the opposite of calm, but that's okay during exercise because this is the this is a part, the part of the nervous system that helps us to burn fat during exercise. So do we want to live here all the time? No, we would burn ourselves out, it's not good. But if we can understand what our minimum effective dose is and how to dose it appropriately over the course of the week, you can get massive benefits in just a little amount of time. 
it's really exciting. Now, uh, another reason why this breath work in conjunction with exercise can help you to burn more fat is because you're actually switching your metabolism so that you're burning more carbs or sugar or glycogen when you perform high intensity exercise, especially when you breathe in this way. Why is that good? You think, oh, well, that seems opposite. I thought I should be burning more fat when I'm exercising to burn more fat. I'm talking about more fat burn over the course of the day. And a lot of research has shown that if we dive in and burn more of those sugars during exercise and become and put ourselves in a state called glycogen depleted, or we're just burning, imagine your body's full of a bunch of carbs and you can't burn fat because you're full of a bunch of sugars. I'm, I'm simplifying it just so you can get a general picture. It's hard for the body to mobilize and burn fat when you have all of those carbohydrates stored in the body, right? And so that's another reason why super high intensity exercise can help with fat loss because you're not necessarily burning more fat during exercise, but because you're blasting through those carbohydrates during the high intensity exercise, you actually burn more fat after exercise. Now, a lot of research does support this, and it shows that we have this, this thing called a glycogen sparing effect, which simply means after exercise, we're not burning as much glycogen or as much sugars because we're getting massively into that fat burning, that fat oxidizing state. So this is really, really interesting thing where, you know, we're, we're mobilizing fats during exercise. We are burning more fats at the beginning of, of the exercise, but then we're also burning more sugars because of the, because of that high intensity state, getting into that anaerobic state. And I think that the, that the tricky part of high intensity exercise is that many of us can't perform or get up to the you know the sprints necessary or the you know the weight necessary that, that that's necessary to be lifted to actually get to that place where we're spiking those high intensity hormones and compounds that are that are really are necessary to achieve those high intensity benefits so that's where we see a lot of injury and so what's my solution something i've become very passionate about over the past few years is finding little tricks, almost hacks, to get more fat loss with a slightly lower intense uh, intensity of exercise. Now, why is that? I tend to train a lot of individuals who are not necessarily Olympic athletes, who are um, maybe just want to work at a more moderate, gentle intensity, but would love to have increased fat loss. Well, here is my simple trick. Perform a slow eight-second exhalation a forced, somewhat of a forced exhalation. So you're blowing out, you're contracting your core deeply. So you're getting a lot of core and respiration strength with it. Inhaling for two seconds, exhaling for eight seconds, and sometimes performing very, very short breath retentions. Nothing intense, nothing like Wim Hof breathing, nothing, nothing dangerous, but just enough. So you're going to feel some physiological changes in the body. You're going to increase carbon dioxide levels. You're going to increase a molecule called lactate, which is also associated with high intensity exercise and increased fat burn. And you're going to increase adrenaline at a lower intensity of exercise, which is a good thing when you're going for fat burn. Now there's an amazing French physiologist, his name is Xavier Warrens, and he's done a lot of research in this area in the area of, or, or looking at, at elite athletes. Now, what I'm interested in is applying his work to my general population exercises who are interested in increasing their fat burn with a more moderate intensity of exercise. So for example, performing just calisthenics or work with a band where you're just performing a set of 20 squats, even with no resistance on the body. And you're focusing on the breath to increase those molecules in the body that help to increase fat burn. We have seen an increased rate of fat loss in the experimental group in my research. And of course, more research is needed because we actually didn't do the test where we looked at adrenaline in these molecules. But my hypothesis is that because of this slow breathing in conjunction with the more moderate intensity exercise, There are spikes in adrenaline. There's increased lactate, increased hormone-sensitive lipase, all of these, these compounds that are necessary to increase the rate of fat burn during a lower or more moderate intensity of exercise, which I'm highly passionate about. Not a lot of research in this area, and so I am super excited to continue to apply for more grants and 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 continue on with this research because I think it's important. I think that there are many individuals, again, 
who need to have, who want better results from exercise, don't have a lot of time and feel discouraged because you're not getting those results that you get from high intensity exercise, yet the super high intensity exercise is what causes injury, which then stops you from being consistent in exercise, which is the key that is that really is the variable that's most important for consistent change over, you know, over time. So please watch my other videos that are entitled breath work for fat loss with exercise. I have a fat loss breath work uh, with, with squats and also a fat loss breath work with Pilates. There are a couple in there and I show you my basic breath work technique in conjunction with those simple body weight exercises that are going to help increase your fat burn. Please visit me at hypoxics.studio. That's where I perform my live classes, hypoxix.studio. And also hypoxics.fitness is where the free community is. Again, that's hypoxix.fitness. I would love to see you anywhere, everywhere. I'm very interactive in my communities and I'm very passionate about teaching this breath method, breathography to the world. So please join me and also please like, subscribe and share this video. It helps the YouTube channel grow. It's a fairly new channel. So I'm excited to share this with you and continue to share. Keep breathing slowly.